Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, I know we had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, everything went wonderful, food was wonderful, uh, enjoyed a lot of time with the family. So now we're back to work. Uh, we've got L23, or number three here in the shop and I know everybody's been waiting on this episode. We are finally gonna get putting the tracks on it. So uh, you're probably wondering why is it so far up in the front corner of the shop? Well, the reason for that is the access to each side of it with the Bobcat. By uh, bringing it up here in the corner, I can utilize the overhead door to be able to take the drive tire off, bring the track frame in, and then bring the track in. And by having it over to this side, that gave me access to that side to be able to come in with the Bobcat, make a 90 degree turn, and drive right up to the side of the combine. So uh, I did try to park it at an angle in here and kind of work corner to corner in the shop. I didn't quite like that. The only other option I thought was was maybe uh, backing it in the other direction and trying to poke the rear end of the combine between the posts into the new addition. But what do steel tracks do to a concrete floor? They scratch it up pretty bad if you turn on it. But if you drive in and out, straight in and out, you're not going to hurt the floor at all. Uh, we bring the dozer in here all the time just on the concrete, no rubber pads, no nothing, and it doesn't hurt the floor because we drive straight in, we back straight out. So this should be the same theory. Figured once I got the tracks on, we can just back it straight out. It's not going to hurt the floor. Now if we were trying to twist around and get it turned back straight to go out the back door, it might have been a different story. But being as light as a gleaner is on tracks, I don't think it would really hurt the floor as much as a dozer would. So uh, anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the combine jacked up. We're going to get the wheels off of it. And I got one of the track frames that go on that side and laying outside the door. I'm going to start on this side. This side seems to be the less complicated side. So we're going to start on that side, figure out what we need to do. My whole theory that I had on putting these on, I might have to throw that theory away and substitute a new one. So uh, we'll just see what it is once we get the tires off and get a track frame held up so we can visualize what's going on. So let's get the tires off, or at least this side tire off for now. Okay, so we've got our air operated ball jack here, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jack it up. Put a shim in that jack. Oh, perfect. It's just enough. We don't want them too high because we kind of want them to let them scoot off on the floor a little bit when we take them off. So, perfect height right there. So, let me get the impact, get the nuts off, and we'll get the wheel off. So it's kind of interesting, these are a lot bigger lug nuts than the uh, other L2. Uh, these are like an inch and a half socket, so I got to use an adapter with just a inch and a half chrome socket, Chinese socket. I know some of you say, oh, don't do that, that's bad. Um, chrome socket on impact, well, it's going to have to work for the day. That one came off. But they're also like an acorn nut. So these are these are definitely different than the other combine. The other combine are only an inch and a quarter socket. Same size studs though. inch Milwaukee impact would get here. Uh, that was a gift from Bex this year was an inch Milwaukee impact. These half inch ones do real good but an inch one would be awesome. Okay 
So I'm going to get breaker bar and break that one loose real tight, and then uh, I'll get the rest off. Okay, so tires out of the way. I drug that track frame over here. So somehow now I got to get this track frame, which is really heavy. I got to get that mounted under the axle and mounted somewhere through here somehow. Uh, there are no instructions for this. Oh, and while I'm in here, I got to fix this. This that that's just not right. I got to fix that. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out a way of holding that track frame up there. Probably use a floor jack or something. And uh, get it bumped up tight against the axle right there and see what it looks like and see what I need to do for brackets and what I need to make and figure all that out. So uh, give me a little bit here and I'll get that held up there and see what we need to do. Okay, so this is what I've come up with so far. I've got the track frame up under here and I've realized that the the peg or axle or whatever you want to call it that sticks out of the track frame that actually holds the tracks with their track frame onto the combine is going to be set back and i've i'm sitting here thinking why would they set that back well then i realized the reason that they set that back was to pull the idler away from the rear of the corn head so that the the tip of the track does not hit the corn head so i'm like okay this all makes sense now uh, there's no instructions with any of this. I'm just trying to figure out this as I go. I actually got a hold of one of the grandsons that uh, I believe is one of the grandsons. Yeah, it should have been one of the grandsons of the original owners of this, of these tracks. And he said he really didn't think if there's any pictures that exist of them. So uh, I'm kind of on my own here trying to figure this out. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my original idea that I had. I know I told, I said I was going to maybe change things up the way that these mounted. But I'm going to go with my original idea of putting the, the plate on top of those two plates. I'm going to drill the holes, corresponding holes with the bolts. And then I will bolt it all together, hold it up here tight, and I will weld my new plates to the bottoms of the axles. And we'll do some gus gusseting to strengthen those. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jerk the other side tire off because now that I kind of got an idea where all this is going to sit, I threw the cross piece under there and I was thinking that cross piece was going to be too short. Well, because the reason I think that or thought that was because these originally come off an M2. Well, after I threw it under there, I realized that it seems to be the right width. So... I was always under the understanding an M2 and M3 were a narrow, bo a narrower body combine than an L2, because I was always told that they're one straw walker less. So I don't know if that's true or not. I have looked in the rear of a uh, M2, and I did realize they're a little narrower. But I guess that don't mean that the body's still not the same width at the bottom. So if anybody can fill me in, educate me a little bit, because I've never owned an M2 to compare it to an L2. I've just looked at one, never had one side by side to do some measuring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, pull that tire off, and I'm going to take the two track frames, bolt them to the cross piece, and then hold them up underneath the combine. I'm going to put floor jacks under out under the end pegs here, one on each side, and the transmission jack in the middle on a big flat spot. And by then, Dad will be done spreading cover crop rye, and he'll be back, and we'll be able to jack it all up at the same time and get it up tight against the axle and then we'll go from there so i'm gonna get all this stuff done real quick okay so what i'm gonna do now is uh 
These bolts are really rusty in this uh, cross piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut all them bolts out and get rid of them, throw them away, and uh, go get some uh, new bolts, put back in it, and uh, bolt all this together, and then we'll gently slide it underneath the combine, get it back forward to where we need it, and then we'll get our jacks under it and rift, lift it up all at once. So let's just make things a little bit easier than trying to put all this together underneath the combine. bolts were in such bad shape from being in the dirt that they were just all rusted up and even even if I did get them threaded off I'd still have to fight the nasty thread so just better this way we'll just get some new ones so I went over to the bolts bin and I uh, got some uh, new bolts and uh, getting these put back together now Sometimes your arms just don't work the way you want them to. Put the bottom on them first. There we go. Get a lot of washing nuts started on that one. There. Now. Well, where'd my new lock washer and bolt? Did not go. Thought I had one on. They were right there, sitting on top of the track frame, right in front of me. If it was a snake, they would have bit me. So this one bolt was already in here uh, because it it can't come out because of this bolt. So I'm just going to reuse it, which it's not real bad. The impact will hammer the nut on. With a little old rusties, it'll, uh, it'll thread on there. Okay, impact. Start snugging these up a little bit. Right. 
entire track frame all put together. Should work out pretty good. You guys slid back under there and see what happens. Okay, so uh, we've got all our bolts taken out where we don't need bolts right now at the moment. And um, I started, I cut a piece of the one by four uh, plate that we're going to use to drill holes in. And this is actually going to get welded to the frame of the combine or to the axle tube of the combine. So uh, this is the first piece, 16 inches long, 4 inches wide, an inch thick. So uh, we're going to go back to the evolution saw and I'll show you how I cut these and or cut this one and then I will cut the other two and then we will uh, start marking out our holes and we'll get the uh, DeWalt magnet base drill and we'll get the holes punched in these and uh, get them bolted back to the track frames and then we can slide it back up under the combine. Okay, so we're back here at the welding table. And uh, I got the evolution saw. I got my uh, piece of bar in it. So we'll loosen that clamp up. We'll slide them through. We'll see where we're at as far as measurement. Let me go a little further. Inch too far. What that get us? Ooh, look at there. Dead on the money. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and tighten our clamp up. Now I do. I love the clamp on this saw. This is a very nice table that this saw has. I'm gonna check one more time before we make our cut. Oh, good thing I checked because that. Uh, Move this over just a, a smidge. I mean, it probably wouldn't have mattered if we were on a government project, but this this project, this is this is personal. Good, right there. Clamps tight. Let's go ahead and make our cut. Safety glasses because these do throw chips. Nice thing is though, the cuts on these are. Are cold to the touch. You can touch them and not get. Ready. It's just it's it's a little bit warm not not hot at all I love this saw because you know every time it seemed like before with an abrasive cutoff saw you'd be fumbling your piece around and it'd be hot and you'd burn your finger with it but uh, this thing does a beautiful job I mean that's a nice cut on there so uh, that's how we're gonna cut the other uh, two pieces out so I'll get them cut out and we'll get them bolted on or get some holes drilled Okay, so I've got my first plate all marked out. I'm going to center punch. Uh, we have a hole at one inch. We have a hole at two and seven eighths, 11 and three quarters, and 14 and eighth. Uh, so I've already marked down the center of the plate, and I've marked our corresponding areas where our holes are going to be. So I've got a good center punch here, and uh, I'll put my safety glasses on. I'm going to simply hold that where the lines intersect. Looks pretty close. Gonna give me a good dimple to uh, to start my magnet base drill. Right, right there. Oops. So uh, these center punches, I actually. I don't know, there we go. I get my center punches at uh, at Menards. They're a Wildly brand, and these things are great. I mean, I've been using these for a while now, 
and I really like the center punches. I mean, they, they do a good job. So now we got those marked out. I'm going to go grab my magnet base drill and we'll get them holes punched. Well, I've got my mag drill here. I got a 13 16 annular bit. Seems to be about the right size, what we want to do. It's not too tight, it's not too loose. So we're going to bring our, uh, our bit down to that hole punched right there. We're going to magnetize the drill, get sucked down fast to the plate. We've got our oiler on. We want to let that sit there and let some oil run down in. When that center piece of that bit pokes up in, it actually triggers the oil flow to happen. Uh, so we want to get a little oil primed up in there before we start because these annular bits are very touchy. Uh, you can't run them dry and you can't oil them from the inside or from the outside in. It's got to come from the inside out or else the oil won't get to the bit. And if you run them dry, it takes the edge right off of them. So in fact, I'm going to get a little old rusties and squirt on there just to give it a little something for now because <clears throat> the drill has set for a while and it probably ran out of oil so that'll give it a little something to start with because I, I don't like running these bits dry because they're expensive and uh, yeah they're just expensive to replace and you don't want them dull because then it makes life miserable okay let's drill this hole to readjust my drill because it needs slid down so let me get a allen wrench and slide that down okay so i readjusted it now we can go all the way through the plate uh, my uncle doug borrowed it to uh, drill some uh, truck frames uh, where he works to uh, put pumps on them to uh, pump out petroleum products out of tanker so uh he must have readjusted it because he uses just a regular uh, drill chuck in it and just uses regular twist drill bits because they're not real big holes. So uh, that's okay. No big deal. Well, we were right there anyways. It was, it was almost all the way through. So, okay, I'm going to finish drilling these holes. I got three more plates to do, so I'm going to be here for a little bit. I think that bit's getting a little bit dull. I'm going to have to order a new 13 16 But that one has been used a lot. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Got this back bolt poked up through there. They fit nice and tight. That's a good thing. That's what I wanted. Okay, now we just got the front tube in. There's that one. Okay, now it's going. Ah, look at there. That'll be great. Okay, so now we're on to something. Uh, that's 
turned out real nice. Everything's the way it needs to be. Okay, now all I gotta do is pull that off three more times and I'll have it. So once we get all those done, get them bolted up, we'll get them hammered on tight with the impact. We'll take the bobcat, we'll slide the track frame under, and then we'll lift it up under the combine and see what we have to do from there. Okay, so all four plates are done. I got all the holes drilled. I got lucky, didn't really have any trouble with them. Uh, so I'm happy that that went as smoothly as it did. Uh, unfortunately, it is late. Um, it is time to quit for the day. Drilling them holes took a little longer than I thought, but at least that part's done. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a night, and tomorrow I'm going to come back out, and uh, we're going to get this slid under there. We'll get it held up. We'll uh, get it squared up with the combine, and uh, we're going to tack weld them on really, really good. And then I think I'm going to bring the tracks in and uh, slide one on each side and see how it looks. Everything, if everything lines up perfectly, everything looks good, we'll proceed with welding them on and get everything fastened. And then uh, we're going to have to do something a little differently back here. Uh, I think I'm just going to drop down a plate off the side frame rail of the combine and uh, make some different corresponding tabs on here with some bolts. So we'll see. We'll have to see how all that uh, plays out once we get that far. So uh, anyways, thank you for watching. This is going to be part one of putting the tracks on. And hopefully part two will actually get it completely done and we'll uh, be able to back it out of the shop. So uh, anyways, sorry we didn't make it all the way to getting the tracks on, but that would be a really long episode. So uh, um, I mean, it'd probably end up like an hour and a half long video. So this way we're only, we're just pushing over a little over a half hour. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you all in the next one, hopefully tomorrow.